Hello, friends. Today, we continue exploring block and we'll take a look at how to add new events, as well as how to use multiple blocks in a single application. Let's begin by adding a new event to our application. Suppose we want to reset our counter. To do this, we need to create a new event. We'll do this in the file where we manage our events. We will create an empty class that inherits from our abstract class. Now, we need to implement the handling of this event. As we remember, this is done using the on method inside the block constructor. This time, we'll specify our second event for resetting the counter as the generic type. By the way, it would be better to pass this function in a slightly different way, not anonymously. We can create a function in this class that will be called when this event occurs. It will be of type void. As parameters, it will take the event of the type we are handling, followed by the emitter. We can pass this function as a parameter of the on method. Note that we pass the function without parentheses. This makes our code more readable because we pass the function as a regular function, not an anonymous one. Now, in our function, let's reset the counter and change the state. As we remember, this is done using the emitter. We call its call method. As we discussed in the previous lesson, this can be done implicitly, simply by using parentheses. Then, we need to pass the updated state. For this, we will create a new instance of our state and pass zero to the constructor. Now, let's create a button to reset the counter. To do this, we will wrap our text widget in a column, and after it, we will add an elevated button. Notice that we use a sized box widget between them, passing a height value. This widget adds space between the two widgets. Next, in the onPressed method, we will get an instance of our block the same way as we did in the previous lesson, using the read method on our context. Then, we will use the add method to add an event to our block. This will be an instance of the event we use to reset the counter. Thus, every time the user presses this button, we will send the event to reset the counter to our block. The block will receive this event and process it, changing the state. Let's test our code. As we can see, everything works, and when we press the button, our counter resets. In this way, we added new functionality to our block by adding a new event. We simply created a new class and inherited it from the abstract class. Now, let's look at another example using block. We will simulate loading data from a server that takes time. To do this, we will create a new block. We'll start by creating events. Let's create a new file where we first declare an abstract class and then a regular class that inherits from it. But what if we want to add some parameters to our event? We simply add a field to our class. In this case, we want to be able to specify the time in seconds for how long our request will take. Let's add this field to the constructor. Now, let's create the state. However, we'll use a different approach for the states this time. We won't have a single class for the state. Instead, we'll do the same as with events. We'll create an abstract empty class that will be common for all states. Then, we'll start creating regular classes that inherit from our abstract class. For each type of state, we will create its own class. For example, a state when data is available, a loading state, and an initial state. We'll split these into different classes. We'll start with a class for the initial state. This will just be an empty class, which we will use to create the block. Next, a class for the state when we have data. We'll simulate receiving data of type string, so let's create the corresponding field.
Then, we create a class for the next state, which is the loading state. This is the state when we are trying to fetch data and are waiting for a response. In this way, we created one abstract class for our state, from which three classes inherit. Now, let's create the block itself. Note that this time, when inheriting from block, we specify the abstract classes as generics for both event and state. Now, let's create the constructor. We will call the parent constructor to set the initial state and pass an instance of the class for our initial state. Next, we need to create a class that will simulate network requests. This will be a simple repository with one method. The method will be of type future because it will return a string after some time. It will take one parameter of type int, which will determine how many seconds the request will take. We'll declare it using the async keyword. Inside the method, we will simulate loading by calling a delay using future.delayed. As we remember, this method takes a parameter of type duration. We'll pass the seconds parameter, which we will take from the method's arguments. We also need to use the await keyword. After that, we'll return a regular string. In this way, we wrote a method that returns some data after the specified number of seconds. Now, let's add this repository to our block. We simply create a field and immediately assign it a value. Next, let's register event handlers using on. We need only one event handler for the event that requests data from the server, or in this case, simulates it. We need to pass a function as a parameter, so let's write it separately from the constructor. Everything is the same as we did before, only the type of the first event differs. The logic of this method will be as follows. First, we call emitter to change the state to the loading state. After that, we create a string variable for the data and call the method from our repository. But we need to pass an int parameter. This is exactly why we added a field to our event. We can access our parameter from the function, and since it is of the correct type, we can use its field without any issues. Not forgetting the await. Thus, we call the function from the repository using the event's parameter. After the data is received, we need to change the state again. This time, we use the class for the state that holds the data and pass our received data to it. Notice that we can easily use different classes in the call method of our emitter, since they all inherit from the abstract class, which we use as state in the generic. Thus, when this method is called, the state will first change to the loading state. Then, after the method that takes some time to complete finishes, the state will change from loading to the state where we have data. Now, let's create a new screen where this block will be used. We won't spend too much time on this as you're already familiar with how this is done. We'll have a scaffold with a floating action button to get the data. In the center, we will use a block builder. Notice that this time we use different generics corresponding to our second block. Then we pass a method for the builder. Note that the type of the state variable is the abstract class which means it can be any of the states that we created and that inherit from it. Here, we will return different widgets depending on the state. First, we will check if the current state is the loading state. For this, we check the type of our state variable against the loading state type using the IS keyword. If it matches, we will return a loading indicator. Next, we will check if it matches the type of the state that contains data. In this case, we will return text with this data. Notice that we can easily access the field with the data, 
even though our state field is of the abstract class type, which has no fields. This is because when we use if to check the type inside this block, Flutter knows that a state is of the data state type and therefore has the necessary variable. This is a unique feature. In other cases, we will return an empty container. Now, we must not forget to add a block provider for this block. But how can we do this if we already have one block provider wrapping our application for another block? It's very simple. We just need to use the multi-block provider widget. This widget allows us to provide multiple blocks at once. This widget takes a provider's parameter, where we pass all our block providers. Now, we need a way to navigate to our second screen. To do this, we will add another button on our first screen. In the onPressed method, we will call the push method and pass the necessary parameters. We covered how navigation works in previous lessons. The final step is to implement the logic for adding the event to the block when the FAB button is pressed. Note that when creating the event, we need to pass a parameter, in this case, an int value. Let's run the code and see what we get. As you can see, everything works. At first, a loading indicator is displayed, and as soon as the data is received, it is shown on the screen. In this way, we explored another approach to creating states and how to use multiple blocks in an application. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to stay updated on new lessons. See you in the next episode.